Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Elijah with Fire Creek Forge. Today I'm going to show you how to install a glass surface on your flat platen for your grinder. I just recently got this new flat platen from Beaumont Metalworks here, and it comes just a piece of steel. And it's fine to use it like that, but there's a couple different reasons why a lot of guys like to put a glass plate over the top of that for the belt to actually run on. First of all, it's going to reduce the friction significantly, which of course reduces heat. That's good for a couple different reasons. Um, you don't have this whole assembly heating up nearly as much. And if you're grinding knives like I do, um, it's going to reduce the overall heat that's at that blade. And that's particularly important when you're grinding a already heat treated blade. You, don't, you can't get it too hot. And so that's very useful in that regard. The other reason is that this steel here is not going to wear nearly as well as a piece of glass and so you're going to end up with sort of dips and valleys in it uneven surfaces that's just the nature of of the beast here but we can improve that by installing a piece of glass now a little bit about the glass it is not your typical window pane it is a high temperature glass that is often used in something like a wood stove for example the window on a wood stove it has to take that higher heat because there is going to be some heat uh, generated with that belt running on there and whatever you're pushing against there to grind. This is my other flat plate in here, and this is the second piece of glass I've had on there. It's been on there a couple of months now, and prior to that, it was about seven years before I had to replace this glass. So, using this method, I'm going to show you how I like to install a piece of plate glass on my flat plate. In. All right, so these are the things that I use to complete this project. First of all, of course, you have your plate in here. And I'm going to leave it mounted up to the tool arm because I've already got it adjusted and set where I want it to as far as tracking goes and all that kind of thing. So we're just going to work with it right there and that'll be fine. Secondly, I like to use JB Weld for a couple of reasons. It's an epoxy, of course, but it also has some uh, constituents in the formula that allow it to provide some structural support to whatever that is that you are putting together. And the reason that's relevant or important is because unless you get this piece of steel completely flat, which is very difficult to do unless you have some kind of milling machine or surface grinder, if you don't get that completely flat, there is going to be depressions or unsupported areas on this piece of glass when you uh, when you install that. Unless you are using something that uh, fills those in and, and still provides that uh, support. And JB Weld does seem to do that very well. So that's why I use that. Secondly, I've got a piece of emery cloth here. It's a very coarse abrasive to clean this piece of steel off. We'll go through that in a minute. Of course, we have our glass. This is, a, as it says here, ceramic glass. As I mentioned earlier, it's a high heat glass. It's not your typical window pane. And uh, this is something that I purchased from a small business off of eBay. There's multiple different people selling these. And I think this one cost me about 30 bucks, but uh, you can purchase this. Just make sure that it's the correct size for your platen. Uh, you don't want it hanging over the edge, that kind of thing, any unsupported areas. Now, a quick note, there are some people that prefer to do an installation like this using support pegs or some kind of support shelf that the glass sits down on. Should the epoxy or adhesive ever give way, that glass is not just going to slide off. I have not found that to be necessary in years of use, like I just mentioned. And this method that I'm going to show you, I have found to be more than adequate. And until the glass starts to crack and break, it is not going anywhere. Last but not least is some acetone. That is to clean the glass completely before we install it. So let's get into it. I went ahead and mounted this in my vise. It's a little high up, but it's uh, nice and stable for us to work on here. Maybe level that out just a touch here. First thing I'm gonna do is use my emery cloth to clean this off very well. This is gonna work best with some kind of backer on it. So wrap that around there. I certainly want to get all the rust off. I just want to get down to clean, bright steel, of course. And the heavy scratches in this is also going to provide more purchase for our epoxy. So we've got that cleaned off pretty nicely. I'm just going to go ahead and wipe the dust off with a clean rig. All right, so we're going to go ahead and mix uh, equal parts of our epoxy, if we can keep it from 
squirting out the back here. It's a little cold out and that's why this is kind of stiff. Now it's probably better to warm this up. What I'm going to do is go ahead and mix this all up and then I'm going to move this into a warmer area for the epoxy to cure. But you do need to be cognizant of that because of course epoxy is not drying. It's actually completing a chemical reaction that uh, sets the resin and that is temperature sensitive. All right, we've got our two-part epoxy squeezed out here, the JB Weld, and that is brand specific for this project. Get that mixed up. You wanna mix it thoroughly, and it's easier to see. In this case, if you've got any color differences between the two parts, you're gonna mix that up so it's an even, even gray color. All right, we'll go ahead and apply this to the steel. Put a nice even, thin layer on there. Even layer all the way around. Alright, so now I've got my glass here. She's got some acetone on a, on a rag here and I'm going to go ahead and clean that surface off. Make sure there is no oils or grease of any kind to inhibit the bond to the epoxy. Be careful not to drop it. Okay, and that acetone dries off very quickly as you can see. We can go ahead and install this onto the steel. All right, so I'm gonna press it down and work it around until I don't see any air bubbles or voids in there. That's the goal here. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but I've got a couple of little voids right here. Those are so tiny and in the middle that I really don't think those are gonna be a problem. I don't like it, but okay, I got rid of that one. All right, I've got it worked down to where we have no air bubbles or voids. So that's good. So we've got some excess squeezing out here. Of course, not really a big deal. So we need to just go ahead and scrape that off a little bit so that we can make sure that we have our glass lined up nicely. At this point, the glass really is not gonna go anywhere and it would be fine just to sit it just like this, making sure everything's level, it's not gonna be disturbed. If you do bump it, it will, it will move side to side still. Now, as you'll notice, I will have to go ahead and move this platen down this way or in um, so that the belt will ride across the pulleys and the platen more or less evenly. This can be a little bit proud, a little bit higher or further out, but not to this extent. So we will have to adjust that here, but uh, other than that, we should be good to go. All right, guys, thanks for coming along on this glass install on my KMG flat plate and work surface here on the grinder. Hopefully this helps you in your shop and provides some useful tips for you. Appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you on the next video.